Um, I don't even know how to start this up. Uh, mm -hmm. What up? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews The hottest beat coming through, dropping knowledge on honor You get a leak at the front of you with the truth that they offer you Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture To give artists and businesses more exposure Keeping it real and stay silent just like a boulder It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower But if I stay running, I promise they getting closer Moreover, success, my older And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like vultures I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll well, we'll be on a whole different vibe Though. We like to ride slow and keep our windows tinted so you really can see us like Stevie Wonder waking up with his eyes closed. Yeah, got the kind of flow that rocked the boat. On my 16s and pounds of dope. And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic, then grab some rope. Matter of fact, better grab some hope while you at it. We keep it live, it's time to tune in. Turn up the sound on what you're using. It goes so hard, I think it's bruising. This show is 2020, no need to zoom in. Yeah. This film here is like pulls at your heart strings. Mm -hmm. If you have children, if you don't have children, right. this is one of those must see. Absolutely. I mean, granted it hurts to look at, but you still can't continue to turn a blind eye to it. Right, it's a period piece to let you know no matter how much you think people value the lives of children. They really don't. Just let you know there's some scumbags out there that don't. So we're talking about today, the trial of Gabriel Fernandez. Um, okay. Netflix documentary special, you know, mm -hmm. it's something we want to look into. Kendra brought it to my attention yes. when she peeped it. And uh, it's about an eight-year-old boy who was uh, tragically murdered at the hands of his mother and his stepfather. His stepfather. Uh, if you're wondering where his biological father was, his biological father was currently incarcerated for a separate crime, right. uh, robbery, I be mm -hmm. believe. And um, the documentary is uh, roughly about ten episodes in it. I, think it's I would about say 10. 10. It's, it's a good little 10 or 12. Um, it definitely focuses on the trial and the factors that led up to the discovery of how this came to be. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Gabriel Fernandez was an eight-year-old little boy who uh, was rushed to the hospital when he was unresponsive. And the sad part of it is his killers are the ones who called 911. Yeah, because he wasn't responsive. After they uh, looked at the child's body and after the body language of the stepfather and the mother, they determined that it had been some serious child abuse occurring. But I'm thinking like that kid was like, that body was all kind of messed up from yeah. anything you can think of from cigarette burns to mm -hmm. markings. And I'm just thinking like psychologically, where were your mind at, you know, to call the ambulance and not think right. realistically like they weren't going to put two and two together. Like, right. not think about that. And uh, that was the other thing with the stepdad because they talked about in depth uh, his interview because yes. he was the one who called. He went first. Yeah. So, and uh, he was also questioned. Yes. And even during the questioning, I felt like he was acting because they kept saying, he kept asking, how is Gabriel doing? How is right. he? How is he? Mm -hmm. But he was in fact the one who... Did that to him. Yeah. He was the death blow. Um, he hit him in the head over yes. 10 times as hard as he could. And this one, no little dude. This dude was no. probably about... Six foot, about 300 pounds. Easily. Like, big guy. Um, so, Isaro, Isaro, uh, yeah. what's his name? Um, apparently, they had suspicions of Gabriel being a homosexual. And from the way it's being portrayed, it looked like they were trying to beat it out of him. Yes, but the people, okay, like, um, the mom, I want to say, one of the family members had got the kid or whatever, and they actually yeah. were homosexuals so yeah. they were trying to make sure I don't think I know the mom kept making little jokes and gestures saying like she hope her kid didn't be like that yeah so mm -hmm. my thing is if you were doing what you supposed to do you wouldn't even have to worry about your child being with somebody or seeing something that you didn't That's want true. them to see if you were being the mother that you needed to be 1000 percent correct and, and that was an ongoing ongoing issue with this trial it was I felt like and this is just me being me. I'm just going to be a hundred. I feel like they went way too easy on uh, the mother. Um, yes. Because she not only 
condoned what was going on, but she did nothing to stop it. And she, um, apparently to her father, uh, she showed signs of being abusive yes. and dismissive of her yes. kids, but she kept having children. Right. And that's what I'm not understanding. If, if you don't cherish their lives, don't have them. Um, and isn't it ironic to me, those are the main people who have kids, the people yeah. that shouldn't have them have them. Right, right. Crazy. And it's, that's, that's the thing that scare me with, with right. parents. We have a lot of unfit parents. And this exactly. is just one of those stories that get out. But um, we got to take a moment and step back. And I want to give kudos to the teacher who did attempt. And she Yes, but my, I wanted her to do a little bit more. Because the DHR, like her making those phone calls and things that she was leaving messages and things of that sort. Yeah, that's great. But to a degree, I do wonder if, if you could have done a little bit more and take it a little bit further. Would right. that child still be here? It's a right. lot of different things because... Me personally, you can't tell me I got a student like that sitting in my class and I'm going to let him continue to go home I understand. with everything that child was going through. Right. Still coming to school with scaps, you know what I'm saying, yeah. from his hair. Like, that's ridiculous. Whew. Yeah, it was it was really tough. Um, I, again, I told you after I watched it, I watched the news coverage. I watched for a good hour and a half of these different coverages and stories on what was going on from different media in the area. And something that the mom said, well not mom, excuse me, the teacher said about the mom was when she would call. She'd act normal. Yes, and not only that, he'd yeah. come to school, but he'd be worse. Mm -hmm. And he'd tell her that, you know, I get in trouble More when, you, I when call, you call. Or they come, DHR comes to visit, or you know, Child Protective Services come. They had a bat and like a baton, like a police baton right. that they would beat him with. like. Mm -hmm. It's and to make a child stay gone. in a what what do you call a cabinet, it? Yeah, like, a, like that's not conducive for a human to stay in, yet right. alone an animal, yet alone a person. Right. Um, they didn't have him sleeping in a the bed. They locked no. him in a cabinet. Right. Where he it had was, to sleep, and um, they placed uh, handcuffs or hand mm -hmm. ties on him, and gagged his mouth with a uh, bandana. Right. So he couldn't scream, and. When he went to the hospital, skin was missing off his neck like they had been yeah. scratching him and punching him. Mm -hmm. um, gashes all over his face. Eye, Abrasions up under the pelvic. I'm just like, everything uh, you think you can do. Numerous BBs embedded in his yes. skin and his groin and his legs and his arms and back. And don't, t don't forget about the cat litter. Yes, so they found cat litter in his stomach, <laughs> uh, meaning they forced him to eat cat litter right. um it was times where the one of the older children i think his name was ezekiel mm -hmm, um testified yeah he testified and he was like um did you see them beat him and it was like yeah they would beat him with a belt but with the metal part of the belt mm -hmm. and they would make him eat expired food and if he threw up the expired food they would make him eat it again, again. so he had to eat vomit and they confessed to this that they did this and I, I don't understand how that makes you not gay. <laughs> I I just I I don't get it. I don't get it. And they tried to. You're just pure torture in that child. Yeah, like it it was in Sad. in the courtroom. They had no emotion. None. It blank stare. That's the thing yeah. that bothered me the most. Like especially the stepdad because oh yeah he didn't he didn't even seem one in the room. Like no he just was there. He he was in a daze looking off. And he didn't acknowledge anything. He just, it was scary. And I, I felt so bad for the biological dad because There's nothing he you had can to do. storm out, you know, when, when they showed pictures of his body right. and what was going on. Right. He had to leave. And I felt sorry for him, man. I, listen, we all make mistakes, you know, and we all have to pay for those mistakes. But for someone to have to see that happen to their child when they are paying their debt to society. Uh, I, it's a tough one. That's, that's going to be terrible on him because he's going to live with that. Yeah, you know? regret. You feel like if I would have been there, yeah, what this wouldn't have happened. So it's a, I, it and is. Shout out to the attorney who actually represented Gabriel. Oh man, he made it a point. Yeah, um, because the, All of them. the attorney, the defense attorney for Isaro, uh, was trying to plead that, oh, he just wanted to torture him, but he had no intent to kill him. You know, he just wanted to just torture him. You know, he'll take the rap for that, but let's not be 
how let's, you want to torture somebody. Let's have compassion for him. Right. How you want to torture somebody, but you just doing a child like that. A child, right. innocent child like that. It, 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 man, I, it gave me a headache, like a literal headache. Um, I, I do just, feel like, too, like those social workers got off easy, Easy, too. too, yeah. Like, that made me, and I have friends that are, I have friends and family members that are social workers, so I definitely would say I got a glimpse of their world. And it made me say it's not as easy and sweet as we think it is. Like they exactly. really have a job. But like one of my friends say, it's like any other job. It's some people that really do it because they love it. And there are some people who do it for the love of the money. Mm. And I feel like if you're only doing it for a job, that's not going to work. Mm. If you're trying to save somebody's life, you kind of, they fell, they fell good. To me, they fell on it. They yeah. completely, you didn't, you didn't do all you could have done, all the steps that you could or should have done. Right. They they didn't do so. It's just as much as I want to hold the parents to a high regards. I got to hold all those and social all, workers. Right. Every last one of them. And I think everybody kind of got off. I mean, too easy to me. I mean, it's yeah. it's just sad because that child's not even here to even plead his case. Right. And this occurred in 2013. Just to right. give you kind of a a timeline of what's going on, and um. The mother got off with just life without parole. The stepdad was sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I know if he's, he's been executed. Waiting. Yeah, I don't I think, think he's, he's been executed. Trial. But I did see something interesting, though. Yeah. And I'm not condoning this, but I'm just sharing this bit of info. So I wanted to see where they were now, like yeah. how they're doing. And the month that that documentary came out, she was attacked. Word yeah, got out what people happened. don't play about kids. Uh, she was shanked. Uh, beaten, jumped, kicked, and they threw hot coffee on her. Mm. They scolded her. So I'm not condoning this. Let me repeat that. <laughs> I'm not. Um, but you you walk that line, you're going to live that truth. You're going to pay those consequences. You know, yeah. people don't play about kids. And Psychologically, I, I think I think both of those parents had a mental complex something was off yeah i, I agree i and i definitely could because tell all he the, was all the off. all the um husband kept saying was he's like you're giving him more attention you're giving him more attention and i'm like it's a kid a kid needs attention like right. if you're Jealous. that needy as an adult something's wrong like, right and that's that's why we want to have this conversation on this podcast because we're all about transparency and doing what's best for you and these are one of those situations when you don't love yourself and this can happen uh, as horrible as it is so yeah this this one was a really good watch I definitely let me preface my statement if you're interested in hearing about the story definitely an interesting story definitely an interesting thing to do your research on however this is a very graphic situation yes the way it comes on just yeah. not even five minutes into the to the actual series, I'm just like, whoa, what in the hell am I watching? Right. Because yeah. it's that deep. I'm like, man, like, who could do this to a kid? Right. I, I thought myself I was going to put autopsy pictures up, but I can't do, I can't. It, somebody, even like me, was like, whoa, this is too much. So It is. It's a lot to handle. If you want to see the extent, by all means, the internet is out there. Go and check it out or watch the documentary. Ten episodes, about an hour an episode, Each. but mm -hmm. it's definitely worth checking out. I firmly believe if you have someone in the household, like a teenager or so, I think maybe not let them watch it if they're like under 13, 14, but it definitely brings it up needs a to lot be the conversation. Yes, has to, has yeah, to. It definitely because even if they're not victims of it, someone else is that and they know. We can prevent this by being a community. So good shit. Good Appreciate pick. It. Good pick. Okay. So that's it. Um, definitely go check it out. It is definitely on Netflix. Um, the Trial of Gabriel Fernandez. It is a, it's a somber watch, but it's a definite must. All right. So this has been your boy, sir. It's Kenda. Peace. We got B. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say B. Sorry to catch myself. <laughs>